and the artillery controllers called in the first shots of the barrage. You can see the artillery on top of the hill, they're opening fire. They're putting down a barrage into the field. And that barrage is going to roll forward very slowly down the field to chivy the German vehicles, to keep them moving. Followed by one of the Opel trucks, and he's got a flak veiling. He's got four machine guns mounted on the back of that for anti-aircraft defence. And then bringing up the rear, as I said, the Stug 3. It hasn't got a turret, the gun is mounted in the hole, so it's got a very, very low profile. They built over 7,000 Stug 3s during the Second World War. They saw service in every single field of operations. Garrison artillery volunteers up on the hill with their 25 pounders. That's the KSZ 223. That's their radio command vehicle. And that's their command vehicle. And he's radio and all the troops in the vehicle to get them to take position. That's a serious firepower from down on the hill now. 25 pounder, the British light artillery. Just the most fantastic field gun could be brought into brought into position, set up, very, very quickly indeed. As you can see, that's an incredible bang. So the light artillery putting forward their rolling barrage, you can see the smoke mixed in with it as well. Yeah, the artillery has definitely found the range here. Uh, seeing the, uh, the German vehicles and they're putting fire down very, very close to them indeed. SDK have said taking position at the front there. The infantry deploying from the back of the uh, half-track armoured personnel carriers. Opening fire across the field there, obviously trying to knock out the white M3 wheeled scout car and they're trying to stop him from being able to direct the artillery fire onto their position. Now, as you can see, coming in from the right of the battlefield now. by the M63 Jackson tank destroyer. He's going to engage the German armoured vehicles in support of him. The M3 Stuart light tank. The okay. 3 has joined in the battle. He's taking position to engage the American armour. The American armour came in from the right and are being joined by probably the most produced tank of the Second World War on the Allied side. That's the M4 Sherman. And in the same way the Germans have their half-track armoured personnel carriers, you can see now opening up their 50 cal machine guns mounted on top of the, on top of the holes. The M3 half-track, the white M3 half-tracks with their arm. German vehicles manoeuvring on the battlefield, trying to engage the field now. More and more of the M3 half-track. Being supported by a Dingo Recky vehicle. And a M8 armoured vehicle, you can see. Taking position down there, backed by the sheer weight of fire from the Allied armour. The M36 tank killer, particularly effective in this role. Yeah. 
Care said 251 on the right, on the left. A tank killer moving forward, but the Germans are about to deploy a super weapon here. You see this SDKZ 251 rolling out the right hand side. You see those big boxes on either side. And each one of those boxes contains a rocket with a 210mm mortar shell attached to the top of it. Basically, it's a very small but very effective artillery piece, that, that vehicle. And he's going to try and deploy to quite sure who's doing what. And this is where good command and good troop discipline absolutely comes into its own. You can see the German trench mortars firing now, putting their own rounds up. And trying to take out the Allied infantry as they're advancing forward. SDK sits in the middle of the field on the uh, left hand side as you're looking at it. Having been abandoned, the troops leaving those. Been taken out by the river of the SDK and the M3. The British infantry advancing, advancing down the left hand side of the battlefield. A Leicestershire regiment, of course, did take part in the operation, uh, not only the landings on D-Day, but the operations afterwards. So very much this was the sort of battle that they would have been involved in. You can see the Allied vehicles still advancing. FDK has been smoking heavily at this machine they both in it. They realised that was the main threat to their advance, so they taken both of those vehicles out. And poor Sherman joining the battle. Notice that the armoured cars and the tanks are advancing very, very slowly. The reason for that is so the infantry can advance behind them. They're actually taking cover behind the armoured vehicle to protect themselves from the massive amount of small arms fire coming from the German trenches now. The German machine guns opening up.
as you can see, they've taken all of the forward positions and they're coming down towards the main trench line and either end, the pincer movement has worked very much to their favour. They're going to take both ends at the same time. It's going to take one last big push. The infantrymen are going to have to come out of their trenches and run forward to take the last of the job. And I want you to imagine what this must have been like all the troops at the time. They are running forward into defensive fire. And the Americans are in the right hand over the front, or are trying to. The Leicesters, Leicester Regiment, down on the left hand end. As you can see, the Leicesters are in the left-hand end of the trench. 